Hi Harry. Hi Ricky, you alright? Um, nice to meet you. Yeah, not too bad. Um, so it's quarter past six, um, due to do the gritting at 6.30. And um, grit is in the background just getting ready, refilling from the salt barn, which will take you to shortly. Um, forecast for tonight is just a, a frost and ice. Obviously where snow's thawed during the day and over the higher routes, um, patchy ice in places. Um, the gritting routes take about four hours to complete. So the gritting start at 6 8 will finish around 10.30. Obviously, we've got officers out of hours who will monitor the weather and see if there's any additional treatments needed during the night or in early morning. Um, all the updates will go out on Facebook, so as drivers are feeding back information, that will come through to us. It will go out on the page. If there's any road closures in the event of snow, if there's any roads that become unpassable, they'll get reported on. Obviously, they can send pictures and whatever else. They have to go back out again tonight. Eddie, who's will be supervising, will bring the drivers in. Um, fill up, get back out there. If there's certain areas which are, are prone to ice, it might just be our high levels. Um, so we might not do all the routes. Um, we'll just do the ones over the, the highest spots where, where it's prone to ice. I mean, Ricky, it's a really tough job, and uh, at this time of the year, people say it's the another one of the emergency services. Yeah. And I think the website has really helped to promote, and, and the public, I think, really now start to appreciate what, what the uh, the workers do. Yeah. So how, how do the workers feel about the website and the feedback they get? They love it because yeah. they, they read it as much as we do. Yeah. Um, they get all the feedback. Yeah. It, it just gives them a bit of a push when they you know they're being thanked for the work yeah. they're doing all hours day and night. I mean it's a tough job, isn't it? I mean let's face it, you're going out in that horrendous weather. Yeah. Um, and uh, do any of the uh, trucks ever get stuck? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've had oh, trucks stuck before. <laughs> you know. So you what know, happens then? You get another truck to come and shift you. Um, yeah, well, yeah. We've got AAA yeah. who are employed as our contracts to come yeah. and come yeah. rescue yeah. vehicles. But yeah, the Britons can get stuck as much as any other vehicle. You know, the four-wheel drives, so they, they can cope yeah. the weather, yeah. but they're all prone to being stuck. Okay, all right. Well, we're looking forward to it tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Let's go. And when do you decide how thick you're spreading it? Does it depend on the ground conditions? Yeah, so if it's a frost, yeah. it'll usually be 10 grams per square meter, which doesn't sound a lot. No, but um, it does the job. Yeah. yeah.
um, to go out with the Gritters last week and uh, it was a fantastic experience. First time I've ever done it, I was out for a couple of hours uh, one evening last week and we went through the, the Bull Hill area of Darwin, a very notorious area for having difficulties when it's snowy and icy. We went up through all the country lanes, through Belmont and what have you. Um, it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience and I learned so much about the service. Um, interestingly, um, when I was out, um, very enjoyable, but I was able to appreciate that the, the gritting team of staff go out uh, on their own. So there's one driver who, who uh, ordinarily would go out on their own, um, obviously operate the gritting vehicle, but inside the gritting vehicle, I've got lots of controls. Uh, as they're able to then deploy and decide when to grit salt, how much salt to grit. Um, so it's not just as straightforward as tipping loads of salt on the road. They've got lots of sophisticated controls within the, the van and they're able to then decide the amount of salt that's being deployed on the roads depending on the conditions. So um, I thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, I did learn uh, an awful lot about the service. I was, I was amazed that this great big vehicle could be manoeuvred uh, on country lanes, tiny little country lanes. Um, so the, uh, the driver has got HGV licences um, and lots of experience at, at driving such a large vehicle. But, um, but yeah, I was amazed that they could get a manoeuvre in and out of these vehicles. But um, I think the, the residents in those areas, I'm sure, are absolutely delighted because um, those are the very areas that could easily become cut off and isolated. Uh, and, you know, the gritting service is, is proven to be absolutely critical uh, for residents to be able to go about their everyday business. Um, I'm often asked, what, uh, what are you most proud about vis-a-vis uh, -vis the gritting service? And it's fair to say that most of the public would acknowledge the gritting service at this time of the year as one of the important emergency services. So in the same way as they expect the police or an ambulance or the fire brigade, as soon as the snow and ice appears, everybody is looking where are the gritting service. And if they're not there, then there's always complaints. But when they are there, the public genuinely value and appreciate the service. And I'm delighted, I've gone as far as to send in many, many compliments about the work of the staff. We have a dedicated website, the BWD Winter website. And it's a great opportunity for the public to interact with the council and send messages about the conditions in their area, but also send very positive messages about the fantastic job that the, uh, the team do. <coughs> um, interestingly, when I was out, the, uh, the driver on the vehicle I was, was out with, there was a guy called Gary, um, and a really lovely guy, because by day he's got a job with the council as a tree inspector. Um, 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 you know, cutting back overgrown trees that present hazard and danger uh, within the community and on the roads. Um, but also in his private life, because we were together for two hours, he was, he was sharing with me that um, he volunteers for the mountain rescue team. And um, he, uh, he also commented on a number of experiences he'd had while out gritting over the last few years, whereby um, people have got stuck, ambulances have got stuck, um, they've been able to help, uh, the gritting van has been able to help the ambulance manoeuvre and, and, and get to, uh, ultimately, the, uh, the patient. And on one occasion, the ambulance couldn't go any further, so the ambulance crew got in the gritting van and he took them to the house. So I think some of those stories don't get told and, and they're a really fantastic credit to the team. So whilst it was only two hours, um, it helped me even though I've always been a big fan of the service, it helped me better understand um, the challenges they face. And, and on my particular night, it was uh, cold and freezing conditions. I didn't have inches of snow, but I, I certainly was able to better appreciate the challenges the staff were working under, because as I said, they work on their own, one, one driver, one van. And you know that's challenging when you're out in the depths of winter, certainly on the top of the moors, um, and uh, even though they've got radio communication and mobile phone communication, um, it's very important because it's very dark uh, and can be quite daunting. Um, so I, was, I had the utmost respect for the team and uh, I'm delighted to see that in the majority of cases, the public likewise have got the utmost respect for the service.